We are delighted to welcome to Trinity Streetsville this morning our Bishop Jenny Anderson. Bishop Anderson will offer the sermon and then be with us for a Zoom coffee hour following the service. A special welcome to those who are visiting with us for the first time this morning. We invite you all now to take a moment as best you can to clear your minds and thoughts and to focus on being in the presence of the one who is always present with you. And may God touch your heart, your mind, and your soul in a new and special way this day. May God bless you as we worship together. Amen. Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching at 10 o'clock, please come right afterwards for Zoom Coffee Hour. This week, we're featuring a Q&A session with Bishop Jenny. At 2 o'clock today, Jeff begins his session of Jesus in the Old Testament. And at 4 o'clock, Messy Church begins. Please sign up for both of those things and look for details in the weeks to come. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I am so glad that you decided to join us here at Trinity for worship. Now let's begin with a reading from the book of Isaiah. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let's all stand together and take comfort in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's lift our voices and celebrate our faithful God. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I Oh, 
Blessed be your name In the land that is plentiful Where your streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name A reading from the book of Genesis chapter 27. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, my son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now Rebekah was listening to I as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left her for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, 
Bring me game and make savory food for me, that I may eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. Go now to the flock and bring me from there two choice kids of the goats, and I will make savory food from them for your father, such as he loves. Then you shall take it to your father that he may eat it and that he may bless you before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Look, Esau, my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall seem to be a deceiver to him, and I shall bring him a curse on myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say, go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebekah took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son Jacob. She also covered his, hand, his neck with the goat skins. Then she handed to her son Jacob the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father. Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son Esau? He asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him and he ate and he brought, he brought some wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. And as he came up to kiss him, Isaac smelled his clothes, so he gave him his blessing. He said, The pleasant smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. May God give you dew from heaven and make your fields fertile. May he give you plenty of grain and wine. May nations be your servants and may peoples bow down before you. May you rule over all your relatives and may your mother's descendants bow down before you. May those who curse you be cursed and may those who bless you be blessed. Isaac finished giving his blessing as soon as Jacob left. His brother Esau came in from hunting. He also cooked some tasty food and took it to his father. He said, please father, sit up and eat some of the meat I, I have brought to you so that you can give me your blessing. Who are you, Isaac asked. Your older son Esau, he answered. Isaac began to tremble and shake all over and he asked, who was it then who killed an animal and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came. I gave him my final blessing, and so it is his forever. The word of the Lord. Good morning, Trinity Streetsville. It's really good to be joining you this morning by the wonders of technology. I think the last time I was with you in person was Jeff Bolt's ordination of the priesthood, which of course now, thanks to COVID, feels like 800 years ago. And a warm welcome to anyone who's joining us this morning for the first time. If you're new or spiritually searching, I'm really glad you're with us. Now, COVID has a lot to answer for. People have died, jobs have been lost, uh, domestic violence has increased. And now there is, of course, the agonizing decision for parents about whether or not to send their children back to school. And while Christians have certainly suffered through even more tumultuous and painful times, over the past 2,000 years, for us, this has been an unprecedented time. And so I am grateful to Simon Flint for his enthusiastic and steady leadership over the past year. When I asked him to become the interim priest in charge last summer, I failed to mention that a global pandemic was on the way. And thank you also to the wardens and the board for their sacrificial leadership during this challenging time and particularly now to Bishop Poole for stepping in. Thank you. I know that you're all waiting and waiting for an announcement about who your new priest will be 
and we're hoping to make an announcement soon about this important discernment. And so in this time of waiting, waiting for a vaccine, waiting for a new job, waiting to be able to date again, waiting for a priest, I want to talk with you about how we can be renewed. How can we be refreshed, renewed, as we look towards a still uncertain future? Well, this morning we're going to spend some time in Genesis chapter 27, looking at the patriarch Jacob, who lived in approximately the 6th century BCE, and how he was renewed by blessing. Can we, who live in an almost completely different context than Jacob did, can we be renewed by blessing? So let's look at Jacob together. Right off the bat, I have to acknowledge that Jacob is pretty hard to admire. He's insecure, manipulative, dishonest. Other people we encounter in the scriptures like King David or Mary Magdalene, they have moments of disaster, but also moments of triumph. Not so Jacob. It's chapter after chapter of epic fails and disastrous family dynamics. And this morning we heard how Jacob, the most dysfunctional member in the most dysfunctional family in the Bible, receives God's blessing and is therefore renewed. The story has a soap opera-like quality with its disguises and sibling rivalry, but it's also poignant, profound, and teaches us about blessing, something we all yearn for wherever we are in our spiritual journey. And this morning, we're going to look at why we need blessing to be renewed how we look for it in the wrong places, and where we can truly find it. So if you could keep your Bibles open to Genesis chapter 27, that would be great. Let's remind ourselves of the context here. In the first 11 chapters of Genesis, we read about how humanity was created, but then began to spiral out of control. Then in chapter 12, we see God coming to a man named Abraham and saying that God is going to heal and rescue the world through Abraham's descendants. One day, God says, the Messiah is going to come out of your family tree, and in each generation there's going to be one child who will carry the promise of the Messiah, who will give broken humanity a way back into relationship with me. Abraham then has two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, with Isaac being the son who carries the messianic promise. Isaac then marries Rebekah, and they in turn have twin sons. And we pick up our story today in chapter 27 with Isaac now very old and completely blind. He tells Esau, his firstborn, to go hunting which was Esau's big thing, and make him his favorite meal. Turns out that Isaac was a bit of a foodie. And then he will give Esau his blessing. But Rebekah overhears the conversation, and wanting her favorite son, Jacob, to receive the blessing instead, hatches a plot. Jacob is dressed up by his mother in a disguise of goatskins to feel like his hairy brother Esau, Rebecca also whips up in record time Esau's obviously not-so-secret recipe for goat stew, and stew in hand, Jacob slips into his father Isaac's tent to pass himself off as Esau and steal his blessing. And so we come to our first point, why we all need blessing to be renewed. In our Everyday English, we use the word blessing rather insipidly to imply a sort of warm feeling that people who go to church might experience. You know, that service was a real blessing to me. Which doesn't convey the power and significance that the word had all those years ago. There's clearly a little bit of last will and testament stuff going on in verses 28 to 29 when Isaac bequeaths to Jacob future grain and wine. But it goes deeper than this. 
blessing, as understood at the time, is a deep discernment of who a person is and what God has made them to be. The words and symbolic action of blessing given by the father to the firstborn son in that ancient culture were words that had shaping power for the future of that son. Notice all the tenses used in verses 28 to 29. They're all the future tense. Now we know this stuff. We, we experience it ourselves. My maternal grandparents were English and began dating as students at Bonn University in Germany as World War II was breaking out. My grandmother, with her curiosity piqued, went to a Hitler youth rally and shook Hitler's hand. My grandfather almost broke up with her that very night when he heard what she had done. It matters that you shook his hand, he said. That means something. Words and symbolic actions have deep resonance and shaping power. The words of a parent to a child can shape the entire direction of a life. I want you to think of the words that have meant the most to you in your life. Think of the words you wanted to hear, the words you haven't heard, and how much it's wounded you. Words move into your life and shape you. Not only wonderful words, but criticisms and even offhanded comments. And an offhand remarks can do that to us. How much more a deathbed blessing from a father to a son. Blessing is a deeply accurate discernment of who a person is and what God has made them to be. Our story shows us how deeply we need this in our lives. We're all seeking the love and affirmation that comes from being truly known. We all want the most valuable person in our lives to say to us, you're special, I love you. In our work environments, we want our bosses to tell us that we're indispensable. In our families, we want our parents to say, I'm proud of you, I think you're great. And there's a poignancy in our story about this need we all have. Have a look at verses 18 to 19. Isaac, although completely blind, was not born yesterday, and his suspicions are aroused. Who is it? asks the aging patriarch. I am Esau, your firstborn, replies Jacob. Now in Hebrew sentence structure, it is always the last words that are the emphasis. And scholars point out that Jacob is trying to get his lie out of the way in the first part of his sentence. I am Esau. That's the lie. And the second bit is where the emphasis lies. Here is Jacob's heart. I am your firstborn. All his life, Jacob lived with Esau receiving the love and approval of his father because he was the firstborn, tall and outdoorsy, a man's man, and able to cook. This guy was a dream. Jacob was smaller, and he spent time with his mother in the tents. You can almost hear the yearning in Jacob's voice. I can be your firstborn, Dad. Love me. Think I'm special. Bless me. This is a reflection of every single one of us. We all want the blessing of the firstborn, of the most valuable purple to say, person to say to us, there's no one like you. I love you. But you cannot bless yourself. You can only receive blessing from outside. You can read as many self-help books as you like and tell yourself how special you are in the mirror in the morning. But your self-worth cannot come from you. It's not going to happen. You need a beautiful person to tell you that you're beautiful. Blessing can't come from yourself. Now the way that they gave blessing in that ancient patriarchal society, it just destroyed families. And we saw that with Jacob and Esau. But it doesn't change the fact that we all still need it to be renewed. The problem is that you and I, 
we look for blessing. That deep discernment and love, we usually look for it in the wrong place. Jacob is an extreme example of how most of us try to get blessing. We pretend to be someone we're not. To get what we need from others, approval, affection, affirmation. We don't let people see who we really are. We don't want to show our flaws or our fears. It's exhausting. For example, some of you have been in jobs you don't actually like. It's not your passion. It takes you away from your children. But you're doing it, I don't know, for the status or the money. You're dressing up as someone else so the world will bless you. We all do this. Or you're always showing only a particular side of yourself to your parents or your friends because you couldn't stand not having their approval. But imagine how Jacob must have felt as his father blessed him, knowing that his father thought he was Esau. How empty we can feel when you know you're receiving blessing because you've hidden what your deepest needs are. All the compliments in the world aren't going to paper that over. So how are we to receive this blessing in life? Well, our excerpt today from Genesis is the beginning of a pretty depressing narrative. Esau becomes so bitter at what's happened, he now wants to kill Jacob. So Jacob flees, never to see his beloved mother again. The family is destroyed. One lesson from this story is to do your best, not to mess your kids up, to grow up to be insecure and manipulative like Jacob. But my friends, being better parents can't be the solution to the problem of us needing blessing. Because one, what about all of us who've already been messed up by our parents? It's too late. And two, those of us, like myself, who were fortunate to have good parents. Well, I'm still needy. I can still be insecure and manipulative. The solution to the problem is something much deeper. And it's only hinted at in our passage. Have a look at verse 33. Isaac is saying, I can't believe it. Jacob tricked me. But yes, I know that he will be blessed. It has dawned on elderly Isaac that God chooses to work through the manipulators, through the liars, the failures, that God brings God's grace through the life of unworthy people like me and you. Let's be clear. Jacob displays almost no redeeming features. God is blessing the most dysfunctional member of the most dysfunctional family. Why? Because God brings God's grace and forgiveness into the lives of undeserving people. Grace is what we receive from God as unmerited gift, love and forgiveness. And what sets the Christian faith apart from all other belief systems in the world is that Christians believe God works through grace and not merit. Isaac, who wants to go the way of his culture to take the firstborn and bless him, is shocked at God's plan of grace. God's plan to shower the undeserving, the sinful, the trickster with his free gift of grace and blessing. Isaac fights it until the very last moment but then he surrenders to grace. How can we today receive God's blessing so we can be renewed? Paul, an early Christian writer, calls Jesus the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead. Jesus gave up his rights and blessing as the ultimate firstborn, to die on a cross so that we might receive the blessing of the firstborn. Jesus gives us his blessing, the blessing that he deserved, the blessing of the firstborn to those who wish to follow him. He gives it so we can be deeply known and loved by the most valuable person in the world, God. The great philosopher 
Catherine of Siena wrote this. When we are who God wants us to be, we will set the world ablaze. Here at Trinity, we can only set our homes, our places of work, and in fact, streets fill ablaze when we've experienced the blessing that Jesus alone can give us through grace. This morning, as I close, I want to pray for you as your bishop. Whether you're new and spiritually searching or you've been learning how to follow Jesus all your life, to receive this blessing or to be renewed in that blessing. Even in the midst of all the devastation that COVID is wrecking, at Trinity, you are an incredibly blessed people. And I'm not just talking about material blessing, although that's true as well. But I'm talking about being spiritually blessed by Jesus, the ultimate firstborn. We have received this blessing so we can bless others. We can bless our children by learning how to love and forgive them and prioritizing their spiritual nurture. We can bless those who've lost hope in our neighborhood, those struggling with depression or recovering from an affair, isolated in a nursing home, those without work, you, you name it. We've been blessed by God in Christ so we can bless others. That's why this church has been here for almost 180 years, to bring God's blessing and hope yesterday, today, and tomorrow, pandemic or no pandemic. God does still go before you in this time of waiting. Where are you seated? Let me just pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in these uncertain and painful times. Father, we all yearn to be renewed, renewed in hope to keep living our daily lives, either for the first time or in a fresh way. Open our eyes to the love and forgiveness you have for us in Christ Jesus. Fill our minds and hearts with a deep knowledge of your love for us in the messiness of our real lives. And so we ask for your blessing, the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we come into your presence this morning seeking your truth and your wisdom in a world that just feels often divided and filled with uncertainty. Many of us come deeply fatigued and just long to lay it all down at the foot of the cross. So we pray, Lord, that our hearts would be open and ready to receive the truth of your love. Holy Spirit, we pray we would hear your voice in the scriptures we read, in the songs that we sing, and the message we receive. Lord, we pray that as we receive that, our hearts would be ones that seek your will, filled with peace where there was anxiety, and that we would be wise and courageous in living out the call you have on our lives. Lord, we pray that we would not grow weary of doing what is right in the midst of this ongoing pandemic, that we would be willing to put our neighbor's good before our own comfort, that we would look after each other well. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the long haulers who've been deemed COVID free and months later still suffer with uh, ongoing health concerns, Lord. And as our kids go back to school, we pray for them and we pray for their teachers whether they're entering a physical building or engaged in distance learning, we pray for their physical well-being, their mental well-being, and their spiritual well-being. And in the midst of these days of racial reckoning, we pray that we would, with courage and humility, engage in the necessary but difficult conversations, and that they would be transformative and lead to change. Lord, we pray for those 
in danger's way due to natural disasters, fierce storms and wildfires. We pray for your protection over each one of these precious souls. And we pray globally for wise leaders who would follow the climate science together so that we may be better stewards of your creation. And in this time, Lord, of our own transition, we pray for our church leadership, for our Bishop Jenny, for our staff team. We give thanks for the wholehearted way Simon has stood in the gap over the last year and encouraged us on a daily basis to crack on. We give thanks for Bishop Poole and his willingness to journey with us in this next season. We pray for our board and the difficult decisions that they make. And we pray for our search committee. We're pretty sure none of them expected to serve quite this long. And we pray that um, they would tangibly feel your grace in the discernment process. Lord, we know that you know who our next incumbent will be. And Lord, in all our joys and all our sorrows and all our uncertainty, we give thanks for your unending love. Never have you left us. Never have you forsaken us. You write the story of your love on each one of our lives. It's individual and unique, and we give you thanks for that. And in these days, Lord, we pray we would proclaim with everything that we are that your grace is sufficient. And we pray all of this through the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. On you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children, may his favor be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children, may his presence go before you and behind. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. If you would like to know more about the ministries here at Trinity Streetsville, I invite you to check out our website at www.trinitystreetsville.org. If you'd like some more information about us, if you'd like some help on your journey with Jesus or learn more about some of our social contacts and outreach or some of our uh, uh, ministries, please um, uh, send us an email, info at trinitystreetsville.org, and we'll get back to you just as quick as we can. If you'd like to uh, make a donation to support our ministry, you can do that either online on our website or by texting uh, to the number uh, that you see on the screen below any amount that you wish. And we thank you for that support in advance. And now may God bless you as you go out into the world this week. In his name, amen.